From Eichmann in Jerusalem by Hannah Arendt Is this a textbook case of bad faith, of lying self-deception combined with outrageous stupidity, or is it simply the case of the eternally unrepentant criminal? Dostoevsky once mentions in his diaries that in Siberia, among scores of murderers, rapists, and burglars, he never met a single man who would admit that he had done wrong. Who cannot afford to face reality because of his crime has become part and parcel of it. Yet Eichmann's case is different from that of the ordinary criminal, who can shield himself effectively against the reality of a non-criminal world, only within the narrow limits of his gang. Eichmann needed only to recall the past in order to feel assured that he was not lying and that he was not deceiving himself, for he and the world he lived in had once been in perfect harmony. And that German society of 80 million people had been shielded against reality and factuality by exactly the same means, the same self-deception, lies, and stupidity that had now become ingrained in Eichmann's mentality. These lies changed from year to year, and they frequently contradicted each other. Moreover, they were not necessarily the same for the various branches of the party hierarchy or the people at large. But the practice of self-deception had become so common, almost a moral prerequisite for survival, that even now, 18 years after the collapse of the Nazi regime, when most of the specific content of its lies had been forgotten, it is sometimes difficult not to believe that mendacity has become an integral part of the German national character. During the war, the lie most effective with the whole of the German people was the slogan of the Battle of Destiny for the German People. Der Schicksalskampf des Deutschen Volkes, coined either by Hitler or by Gables, which made self-deception easier on three counts. It suggested, first, that the war was no war, second, that it was started by destiny and not by Germany, and third, that it was a matter of life and death for the Germans, who must annihilate their enemies or be annihilated. What this... It, Honor Arendt is saying in this section is very pertinent to today. We are seeing now a lot of talk from Donald Trump and his entire cabinet about alternative facts, them misstating things that are easily verifiable. We've seen Fox News take part in this since 1995 when the network launched. We are seeing websites like Truthdig, Alternate, and all these other Occupy Democrats and all these left-wing sites as well, um, and probably the most famous of all being Infowars, who are participating in this activity of not telling the truth, not verifying what they say, and what they're doing is essentially supporting fascism. I, my nana, my great-grandmother, came here from Germany in 1927. My uncle Jürgen died last um, last October at the ripe old age of 104. He served in the military because he was drafted as a young man, and my nonna's first husband stayed there. He died when I was seven. And so I personally know people who did live in the Third Reich, I know people who lost family, people died, and every day, I don't use the word fascism lightly, I use it as moral philosophy makes me use it, which is an accurate description of a certain view of the world, same like liberalism and communism, and looking back to the original documents and also the practice which are surprisingly tight until we start to get to the 1980s. Um, I've written about how the words liberalism and communism and fascism have changed in the way that politicians use them over the last 30 years on my blog, which I'll link to in the doobly-doo, but it's important um, to understand that these philosophies impact real life people and it's important to be accurate, important to understand them, and important to notice them. 
Alternative Facts is not just from 1984. It's straight out of Nazi Germany. The times when people say, well, your opinion is just as valid as mine, when they're believing something that's utterly unbelievable, is how Hitler maintained his power. It is how Hitler came to power. This is the truth. And this is what Hannah Arendt and many other survivors of the Third Reich taught. So, this means that how we fight fascism is very simple. Research. Learn. Look up the statistics. Look up the numbers. Verify your facts. Know what's going on. Understand what's happening. That is how you defeat fascism. Fascism survives in a system of confusion, in a system of lies. Undo those lies and fascism dies. Good luck.